In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an AI agent using Make.com and OpenAI Assistance. We'll be able to have conversations with this agent via Telegram, but you could also use WhatsApp, Slack, or lots of other triggers. This agent will be able to post to social media, and before it does that, it can research topics using Perplexity and also generate images using Flux1. That might all sound very complicated, but we're using a powerful feature in OpenAI Assistance called Function Calling, where we can create really simple, separate scenarios such as a research tool and an image tool. This is our simple image tool where it goes to Flux1, and this is our simple research tool where it goes to Perplexity. When the agent gets our approval to post it to Facebook, we use this simple scenario, which uses Make's internal Facebook app to publish it directly. I'll explain how to set up the assistant afterwards, but let's just start with a demo. And if you want to get way ahead in your AI automation journey, then check out the link in the description to our community. We'll get access to all of our automations, including the one in this video. I'm going to ask it to create a Facebook post about DeepSeek V3. So while it's doing that, what it's doing is we've sent the Telegram message. It's hit our main make.com scenario. Then it's called this OpenAI Assistant. We're expecting it to request this research tool, which is this perplexity scenario. It's researched this topic and has now come back with a draft Facebook post. Within the assistant, we can tweak the settings to write in our tone of voice. But in this case, we can have a back and forth conversation to get it to refine the output. So I can ask it to make it more casual. Okay, so this is far better, saying DeepSeek V3 is shaking things up in the world of language models with a whopping 671 billion parameters and so on. That's a much better post. I'll say that's good. Okay, now it's asking me would I like to generate an image to go with the post. I'll say yes. Now it's likely that the OpenAI assistant will choose to use our image generation tool scenario, and then it'll come back with the result from that. Perfect. Here's a generated image to accompany your post. That looks good, but let's just say I want to create a different image. Looks good, but I'd rather use an image of a robot at a computer desk. There we go. The OpenAI assistant has interpreted that, that we need to generate a new image. So I'll say that looks good. Finally, it says, awesome. Are you ready to publish this post to Facebook with the text and image provided? I'll say yes. Perfect, there we go. We have the text and the image directly uploaded to Facebook. Let's dig into this design pattern because once you understand how this works, you can create agents with lots of different tools that can do lots of different things while keeping your make.com scenarios very modular and easy to understand. Once we sent a new message, it triggers the make.com scenario. And that is this main scenario we have here. This is a Telegram bot that's just watching for updates and it's using an instant trigger. So this will run instantly when the data arrives and it does not need to run on a scheduled basis. That's searching a data store to get the thread ID for the OpenAI Assistant. I'll explain that a little bit later. The magic for orchestrating this agent is the OpenAI Assistant. Here I've selected the social media agent. The easiest way to create this is to go to platform.openai.com and go to assistance and just create a new assistant. You simply add in the name of the assistant, then you provide system instructions. You can make these pretty detailed. For example, you're a Facebook posting AI agent designed to assist users with creating and posting content. Your role involves guiding the user through a structured workflow to create and publish Facebook posts. You want to provide clear rules for the agent to follow, but you do not want to make the rules so complicated and convoluted that might confuse the agent and might make this difficult to adapt to other use cases or difficult to update. In this case, I'm simply asking it to generate draft text for social media. I'm asking it for feedback. When it's happy, you should ask for an image, but it's optional. If an image has been generated, ask for feedback. When finished, ask the user, do they want to post anything else? This is a general operating procedure for what it needs to do. I've added in a general tone of voice, but you can also be far more specific with this. And I've given some specific instructions, such as to understand the user intent. We want to determine whether the user wants to research and draft a post, or to draft a post directly from the text. So you could ask this agent to research for which it's going to use this research tool, or otherwise you could get it to bypass that entirely. And you can pause the video. As you see here, I've mentioned these research tool, image tool, Facebook posting tool, but where does the connection actually happen? I'll click save, and down here you see these functions. These functions are going to trigger simple make.com scenarios. So for example, the research tool is going to use this simple perplexity scenario where we're using webhooks. So there's a webhook at the start, it's waiting for the incoming data, it's going to trigger perplexity, then it's going to respond back to whoever called it with the data. So let's go into it. This might look a bit intimidating, but it's actually not that difficult once you can work from their examples. If I was recreating this tool from scratch, go to functions, click generate, and then function name should be research tool and input parameter 
it's generated that perfectly. It's research tool that is a name, a function to process the query, and that's going to just pass in this query. OpenAI Assistant is going to get make.com behind the scenes to call this scenario. It's going to provide the query as you see here. And the query is what we defined there, which is this query. So it might look a bit complicated, but it is pretty easy to set these up once you know what you're looking for. For image tool, we have image tool, our description that we've just added. The parameters, the only parameter is prompt. That's the only difference between the last tool that we used here and I just added in a description there. Finally, for the Facebook posting tool, again, name is Facebook posting tool, description. In this case, we have two parameters. We have text and image URL. You could also add in a link URL here, but you could get OpenAI to generate that code for you or paste this into ChatGPT. It would do the same thing. Now, because we've added these functions within the OpenAI Assistant, when you add in this message and assistant module, within make.com, these functions auto-populate. So we have this research tool, the image tool, and the Facebook posting tool. And we can hook these up to our other scenarios, such as the post to Facebook, go to this, we can copy the webhook, and then we've copied the webhook there. I really like make.com's integration with the OpenAI Assistant on how it calls these tools, because I can make this diagram pretty easy like so, and we can just pretend that it's calling these research tools, AI image tool, Facebook posting tool directly because it all happens behind the scenes within this one module, because we've added these webhooks here. In reality, once we're sending a message via Telegram to get it to research a topic, it's gonna go to the main scenario, go to the OpenAI Assistant. The OpenAI Assistant behind the scenes actually goes back to the make.com scenario. It says, I need to use the research tool. Behind the scenes, make.com will trigger this webhook, which then triggers this scenario. It gets the result from perplexity and returns this webhook response. And then it returns the webhook response from this research scenario back to the OpenAI Assistant. It's a pretty complicated recursive relationship. The OpenAI Assistant can call multiple tools in one go. So it could say, I want to research, but I also want to generate an AI image. We could ask it to do both at once. When it does that, it's gonna go through this scenario behind the scenes multiple times. But all we need to do is just wait for this assistant to finish processing. It will send the result back to Telegram. A great benefit of this design pattern is that we can reuse these tools across lots of different agents because they're just simple scenarios within make.com. In our community, we have the concept of micro templates where we have lots of these kind of smaller scenarios. In this case, they are agent specific micro templates because they have an incoming and outcoming webhook that we can call from our agent platforms. These are not just applicable for OpenAI assistance. If you're using a different agent platform like relevance.ai or lots of others, you could use the exact same scenarios because you can call these webhooks from anywhere. If you don't use function calling, you could have everything in one scenario, but that results in a spaghetti of nodes, of routers, of filters, and then it's not easy to reuse these across scenarios and it's very easy to make mistakes and get messed up in your logic. Within our main scenario, I have two more things I'd like to show you. You may be wondering how we handle the chat history within this agent. And this happens within this message and assistant. When you create an assistant, you pass a thread ID, and that ID is what you see here. We're using a data store to store this data. So if you do not have one set up, go to data store, click, and you can choose a data structure. In the data structure, you can type channel ID, add item, and add item, and get your thread ID and click save. The first time an authorized user sends a message through this, the thread ID is going to be blank. So it's going to pass nothing here. That's effectively a new conversation. At the end of this flow, we're checking to see if the thread ID is blank. If it is, it creates a new data store item. That's the channel ID. So this is the Telegram channel ID and the new thread ID that's been created by OpenAI. The first time that's been run, it will go through this entire flow. The second time it runs a scenario, it'll go through this, it's gonna search the data store to see if a record exists for that channel ID. If it exists, then this thread ID is not going to be empty. So we're gonna pass this into the OpenAI Assistant. So then it will have the context of the conversation history. And then because there is a thread ID, this filter will be false and it will not add or replace the record in the data store. So that's a very simple use case of how you can use a data store to store something like a thread ID without having to have routers and extra filters and things like that in place. The last thing I've done is to add in a router after an error handler. So to add an error handler, right click and select add error handler. I've added in a router and it's gonna check to see if the run is in progress. So if we got an error back from OpenAI Assistant, such as can't add messages to this thread while a run is active, that's because when you send a message to the OpenAI Assistant, and if it calls an external tool, such as posting to Facebook or 
calling or research scenario, then it locks that thread or that conversation. I have a pretty primitive filter in here to check the error message to see if it contains while a run is active. If it does, it's almost definitely going to be for this reason. If so, it's going to respond this to Telegram. I'm working on a response to your previous message. Hold tight and I'll get back to you shortly. Please wait before sending another message. Otherwise, if that's not the problem, it will just relay the original error message back to Telegram. If this is a customer facing agent, you probably do not want to do that. But because this is an internal agent, it's handy to do it because if errors show up, then I'll be able to quickly diagnose it directly from Telegram. You could use this design pattern for so many different types of workflows in your business or for your clients. We're going to have a lot more AI agent content in this channel coming soon. So make sure to hit subscribe to stay in the loop. And if you want to get way ahead in your AI automation journey, then check out the link in the description to our community. We'll get access to all of our automations, including the one in this video. We'll be greatly expanding our micro templates section in the community to include lots of modular scenarios that you can easily call from your AI agents. You'll get instant access to all of these courses with more on the way. You can get live support from us directly via our live workshops or via our active community. Thanks for watching.